Receiver, so I was just locked in on him. My goal was to at least keep him under 50 yards. Uh, Our job was to contain the QB, James, because you know he's a really good QB, and if he gets out the pocket, he's gonna have a great game. He'll show up. So I felt good, and as a team, I felt like we felt good. We had a good game plan to, um, you know, force quick turnovers, force the ball out of James' hands quickly, and just you know play the defense and get off the field quickly. Um, going out the game against Harlem. I was really, you know, ready to play. You know, I was just happy to play and get on the field because me personally, I didn't think we were going to have a season, but I was still, you know, in the gym, still trying to work because I, I, I believe football. Like, I love football. I put everything, my passion, sweat, tears into the sport. Yeah. First game? Yeah. Um, I thought it was really going to be a good game. Um, and overall, we still played good. We, you know, lose our heads. We still stay disciplined and played a good game in our eyes. Uh, you know, against Harlem, we knew it was going to be a challenge, obviously, because, um, you know, they were pretty stacked from uh, last year. We were going to be down some kids in terms of eligibility and then um, in terms of kids who were able to make the right amount of practices. So we knew it was going to be um, a tough game.
touchdown. complete touchdown. Thanks to everyone for attending our football game and please drive home safely.
Like coming off Harlem because we, we played a pretty good game against them. So our defense was hot. When we came into the game, they punched us in the mouth off the gate, and the whole momentum of the team just went down, honestly. Game against Hano, we had a lot of hurt players, uh, including myself. My, uh, my right ankle was sprained. Uh, other players were hurt, and everybody, you know, we, we were focused coming in, trying to get focused, you know, but at the end, it wasn't how it was supposed to be. You know, score to us at all, really. <laughs> As the clock winds down to the final score, ladies and gentlemen, your final score, Indians 50, Auburn Knights 0. Indian fans, get ready. We weren't prepared mentally at all. I feel like we couldn't get them off like on 3rd and 18s and 4th and 18s. We weren't getting the job done at all. I mean, as you can see, it was 50-0, so we couldn't really do nothing. Score tell us all by ourselves. Um, against Hananiga, that we were actually coming back from spring break that week. So uh, that actually added some challenges that we haven't had to deal with before in the past, obviously with the season being in the spring and then having to do a spring break. So um, getting kids to practice there and on time um, was an issue. And we knew that uh, Hananiga was going to be good as well because um, they had just came off of two big wins. So again, we knew it was going to be a, a challenge for us. Uh, honestly, just keep fighting. Fight all adversity. Don't let nothing set you back or keep you down. Just keep going forward. I felt like I could have played more aggressive, faster, smarter, and, you know, I could have made a lot more tackles and, you know, made some plays to change the game and things like that. Yeah, I, I believe I could have played more physical and faster and aggressive and did things to put my team in a position to win the game, like cause turnovers, but... No, obviously that didn't happen, so, yeah. All right, did you take anything away from those two games? Uh, definitely. Um, regardless of anything, just keep your head up. You know, it ain't going to be bad forever. Like, it's not going to be bad forever. It's just a bad moment, not a bad life. Um, yeah, you know, I think we did make, uh, make some changes schematically um, just to kind of fit some personnel issues that we were having. Um, and then also, we knew after that we were going to have to kind of buy in a little bit more as a, you know, as a whole program um, to just try and get things back on the, on the right track. I feel like it brought the whole morale of the team down. People wasn't doing schoolwork. They didn't want to play anymore. People were talking about quitting. So I don't know. I just feel like that whole quarantine thing, the quarantine thing just um, set us back a lot. We took a hit, and I mean, we just had to take that week to get better and mentally and just come back strong and hopefully to, you know, win our last game. Personally, it didn't affect me. And I was still on my grind and working hard, you know, to get better every day. For our team, you know, we kind of had a, set, a setback because they were just out of it mentally. You know, everybody was, you know, gaining weight, you know, just doing their own thing. So it kind of set us back. All right, how did the team getting quarantined affect you? Um, it really affected me a lot because what happened to us, 
we missed out on two games, two good games at that. We missed out on two opportunities for us to go either two and two or one, what, what, one and three. And I'm a senior, so we got to play six games. I ain't played all six games in my career as a senior, and that hurt me. It was hard on the seniors, and it was hard coming back to only play one game as a senior. And all you can wish you can just do it again. Right. How does the team getting quarantine affect it? Uh, it definitely made a huge impact on the team because not even just not practicing, it's just school or two. You know, a lot of uh, players on the team was just slacking on them school, including myself, I'm not going to lie. But I got that, you know, I got it right back. Uh, once we came back, everybody was trying to get right back on it. But it definitely, definitely did, you know, make an impact on the team. How do you think the Man, it was hard. It was it was definitely hard for the players. Um, it was really really challenging for them to stay engaged, uh, not only with um, school but with just team meets and things like that. Um, they were pretty. Uh, they're pretty well. We all were pretty broken up about it. It was just a very unfortunate situation. You know, we were dealing with um, not only coming off of the two-week quarantine, but then the following week versus North, we were they were on quarantine. Um, so essentially, from our last game, it was going to be about one month. And uh, two of those weeks was obviously no contact. And then coming back, kids knew we weren't going to have a game. So we were dealing with some commitment issues from um, – a handful of kids that we kind of had to sort out. So going into that week, um, we weren't really sure who was going to be there and, and what type of uh, what type of chemistry those kids would have, you know, because we were playing a lot of younger kids, um, and so there was a little bit of uh, unknown going into that week. Personally, I, I didn't want to play. Um, I wasn't motivated to play the whole quarantine in, and we coming back to play two games, then they switched it to only we play one game. I didn't want to play football no more, and that's, and that's a very odd thing for me because I love the game of football. I've been playing football ever since I was five years old. Um, like, that's my that's the, my heart and soul in me. Like, I do anything to play football. But out of all my years of playing, that was my first time feeling like I didn't want to do this no more. Uh, me personally, it was a lot going on between the week of us playing Belvedere. So, but me personally, I was I was ready to play. Just played my last game, but I was kind of hurt. You know, just was with everything going on and considering I'm a senior, I really only played one or two games considering I was hurt also. But I was just happy to be out there. First quarter I got hurt, so I didn't really, I couldn't really do anything, but just sit there. So, I mean, I, I love sitting there watching my team, though, of course. For me, I feel pretty good. You know, like I said, I was still grinding, you know, getting better every day. Honestly, it was the last game of the season. After sitting out three weeks, I just wanted to go out there and ball. I was hyped. I mean, I was just really back. I was really excited to be back out there, and I just really wanted to win on our belt for our junior year. So, I just wanted to go in there, win the game, and, you know, just get out. And now for the Auburn Knights seniors, number five, Tyrese Witt. He's with brother Tyshawn Witt. Next up, number 12, Antoine Gary. With his head coach, J.P. Hollow. Next up, number 13, Darius Maxi. He's with mother Shantoya Young and grandfather Charles Young. Next up, number 20, Will Key. 
He's escorted by Mother Tanika Key, Father Willie Key, and Grandfather Edward Clanton. Next up, number 23, Jaquan Brady. He's escorted by his grandmother, Sharon Jones. Son, Jaquan, and girlfriend, Sherry. Next up is Darian Donadio. He's escorted by mother, Samantha Brown, and father, John Brown. And next up is number 61, Ethan LaRue. He's escorted by his father, Robin Nelson. Eloy. Escorted by Jennifer and Mike Lodi. Like I just said earlier, it, I mean, a win is a win. It, it felt good, but you know, it wasn't a playoff team. I feel like we only, like at this point, we only can beat mediocre teams, which is going to change. But I don't know, a win is a win. It felt good to get it. I mean, it felt good, you know, having a win and all. But I feel like we need to compete more and be better teams. I mean, I was happy about the win, but still, at the end of the day, we just. I just want to compete and compete against better teams. I feel like it felt great to boost our confidence, but at the end of the day, it's not a, like a it's not a playoff team at all. And yeah, we celebrated in the moment, but you know, after we got to still push ourselves because right now we only can beat those type of teams like Belvedere. We can't beat the Harlem's and the Hanos. So, that's what we're pushing to to beat those type of teams. It feels good. It was good. I got to play with my boys for the last time. It was good, but it was it was heartbreaking too. Cause like, dang, like this is my last time stepping on the field as a high schooler to play football again. Now, like, I can't take nothing back. Like, I gotta just go, go on with the flow now. Like, there's no more football for like, high school. I me mean, playing with the guys. Like, everybody just gonna take their own route now. Uh, it felt good, you know, just to come out there with a win. You know, considering we didn't have any wins to start off with. So that's good. We got a little win under our belt. Just, just that. You know, I, I was really, really happy um, that the kids were able to go out there and make some plays. Um, they had a lot of success. They had a lot of fun, which is, you know, really what this is all about. So it was nice for them to be able to end the season um, on a good note, and um, for them to be able for for a lot of them for that to be their last, um, you know, game, especially for the seniors. So. That was huge.
cramping up, man. We still win it, though. <laughs> I got hurt. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. My stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how life go. Life go. Y'all see me in college, though. Yeah. College ways. Y'all know I'm coming. Juco, baby. Yeah. Good job tonight, guys. Yep. Yeah. Look, bro. Why is these boys playing? Get the scoreboard, baby. Get the scoreboard, bro. Why is they doing this? Nice, bro. You know that. You know what I'm saying? Come back strong in this. Good game, y'all. Good game. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man, what game we talk to? You know how we coming, man. So, oh, yeah. Hey, I'll be back next year, man. Back next year. I'll be back. He's taking over next year. I'll be back. He's taking over I'll next year. Really this, My boy's taking really over next year. Hey, tell him stop playing. Hey, they're taking over next year. Tell him stop playing. Hey, they're taking over next year. Hey, y'all see what my boy Nike is doing now. Y'all see what my boy Nike is doing now. Good job tonight, guys. Good job tonight.
it felt great for me because the whole quarantine, I was just thinking, am I going to miss my junior year? Am I not going to be able to play? How is college and scouts going to be? So honestly, getting back on the field, it just felt great. Really brought me back to life, got me back on my schoolwork and everything. It was really, I was really grateful to have that because it's my junior year and next year I'll be able to play a full season and a lot of seniors didn't get the opportunity this year. So I'm just really grateful to be out here and get to have a junior year and play again. No, it felt great and it meant everything to me because I didn't want to miss a year of varsity football due to something like that. So even though we just only got three games, I'm still glad that we had a junior season. Now we have something to build off from. So yeah. yeah. Us finally getting a chance to play. Like I, I was happy. Like I was excited. Um, very excited to play football because they kept telling us all oh, we wasn't going to play because of the uh, COVID. Uh, it was like so many reasons and excuses how we're not going to play. And then when they said we finally could, I was mad that we only got to play six because like, we, we had was called the next 10. We played 10, nine games. So we wanted to play all nine, but we only got six. So we was just, we was happy we got that. Uh, it meant a lot. You know, this year was dedicated to my uh, to my sister, my uncle, and um, my homie, my dog for life, you know, kid. Uh, I just really did all this for them. But considering everything didn't go how it was supposed to be, I just tried to work my best. I put them on my cleats, you know, I, everything, everything I do is for them. You know, for my uh, sibling, my mom, and my brothers and stuff. But this year was definitely dedicated to them because, you know, you know, I think um, going into it, you know, we thought we would play at some point, but there were times when we were like, we weren't sure. We really didn't think that there was going to be um, a season at all. So to finally get word that there was going to be one, um, you know, I was really, really excited for the players um, and then getting into it and missing three weeks of it. You know, there were some ups and downs in there to really kind of have to battle through, but um it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the kids. I know that. And um, I was just really happy that, one, we were able to get a season, and two, that we were, we were able to end the season um, on a really good note. Honestly, my plan is to, well, right now I'm trying to lean, but lose the weight, uh, get faster, and just – you know, get smarter and increase my game knowledge. Just train, get stronger, faster, better, better uh, physically, mentally, you know, just be a smarter football player and a better leader on the field too, and just compete. Our plans going forward is, you know, win more games and beat playoff teams. Yeah, that, that's our plan, but obviously there's gonna be things to mess up our plan, but we just gotta, you know, keep fighting keep, and keep grinding you know, make sure that plan gets completed. What are your plans going forward? My plan going forward is I do want to go to college and play football, but as of right now, I'm deciding should I take a year off. Um, but if I don't, I'm looking to go to a JUCO and take it on for there. All right, those are the questions. Thank you. All right, Jaquan Brady, class of 2021. Dose. <laughs> My plans going forward, uh, after the summer, I plan on going to college. Um, I have a couple colleges that I got accepted into, uh, some in Missouri, some in Kansas City. Uh, it was some in Ca uh, California too, but I'm most likely going to be playing Juco considering I don't really have any much film, and I plan on switching my position also, so I'm going straight to college though, yeah. Uh, Tyrese Wade, class of 2021. I'm going to catch y'all up, you know, sing, graduate soon. Thanks. <laughs> All right. You know, um, I'm really proud of them, and I just want to say thank you um, for investing over the course of these um, four years. I, I, you know, I think you moved the program forward. Um, in a really, really challenging year. So for the people who, um, or for the guys who stuck it out, um, thank you.
At this time, please turn your tassel from the right to the left side to symbolize our transition to our next adventure. Congratulations! All right, man, how are you feeling? You know, I'm feeling good, you know. Long on four years, but I did it. Don't nobody know what I did, you know, what I did to get to this. Don't nobody know what I got, had to go through. But I'm just proud of myself that I got to this point in my life, for sure. Is there a message you want to include to any uh, friends or family? Uh, um, I want to thank my mom, my brothers, everybody, you know, in my household. I want to thank my best friend, Maya and Martia, you know, my besties for life. Um, now, most of all, I want to thank, um, my lost ones, kid, my sister tonight, and my uncle David. So I really want to uh, just take the time out and appreciate them. And Ms. Campbell also, because she great job of what she does. So. All right, how are you feeling? Man, I'm just feeling blessed. Uh, honestly, I can just say I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a miracle. That's how I feel. Was there any uh, special message you wanted to put in for uh, family or friends that supported you? Yeah. I just want to say thank y'all for staying supportive because there was a lot that went on throughout these four years. And I'm just glad that they continued to stay with me. It was just trust and love. And I appreciate it. Perfect. Perfect. Honestly, I feel like what our coaches stress the most, being an Auburn Knight, just work hard, compete every day, don't give up, you know, just keep going, keep pushing, push yourself to the limit. Perfect.